before I show you this electronic pop beat, I just wanted to appreciate how beautiful it is outside right now. There's been so much snow, and today there's just stunning blue skies. There's just snow everywhere. Right, let's go. It's so cool being in here with the snow outside. I'm gonna show you how to make this. Falling and burning blue fire going up in my head. Your kids staying true. Welcome to this video. Thanks for checking it out. If you enjoy it, if you find it valuable, you know what to do. I want to break this video into two parts. Part one being making the beat and putting the idea together, and then part two being how to turn that into a full song, the arrangement, and how to then put vocals onto it. So for now, let's just focus on the beat production. The sound started from an arcade sample. I loved how dark, ambient and atmospheric that was. One of the problems or the challenges that I've found with Arcade is that most of the time I end up either replicating the sounds with a synthesizer and designing the sound myself so that I can choose which melodies and which direction it will go to instead of being limited to just the sample. Or I will take a one shot from that sample and then use that to write my own melodies and chords. That was the original sound. And then within Vital, I just decided to try and recreate it myself. But then I could write my own melody and make it bounce and move the way that I wanted it to. I kept the sound design actually very simple and I love doing that with sine waves. Sine waves is probably one of my favourite waves to work with because you can do a lot with it without it having to be overly complicated. Just because you have all of these buttons and knobs and different options doesn't mean you have to always use them. So most of the work is done here with the effect. I have a chorus and a reverb, not doing too much special. The delay has an eighth delay. Just gives it that radiating sound. And then the soft clip, I just have the drive pushed up quite a lot. With the envelope, I've just given it a softer attack. So instead of hitting because I just find that's too aggressive. It just gives it a softer edge, and then you can bring that edge back in to taste with the distortion. What I could then do that I couldn't possibly have been able to do with just the arcade sample is add more notes down in the bass. I didn't want it to be a really clear melody. I wanted it to be kind of dystopian and like lurking in the depths or whatever. <laughs> the next sound I used was also an arcade sample. It was just from their toys selection, but I just took a one shot, recorded that out. So I could choose the melodies and rhythms that I wanted it to have. <laughs> I've always wanted to use one of those sounds as well because I think they're really cool. And then also just added in some reverse sounds. I put a halftime gross beat on them, automated this volume knob here, so that in certain sections you hear only the half speed, in certain sections you don't hear any of the half speed, and in other sections you can have a blend of the two. And then here it starts to merge. And I just love that because the half speed gives it a more of a jarring, slower step to it, but keeping a bit of the full speed version keeps that up tempo rhythm to it. Then I just took another one shot from the Sicky Beats Pandora pack. Just has this really nice luscious sound and I didn't want this one to be playing lots of different notes, I just wanted a basic atmospheric accent. And then the last element within these is just this little lab's atmospheric bell. It's doing something very similar to this, except that one is lower down in more in the mid range frequencies, whereas this is much more ambient and ethereal. 
like I say, it's coming from Spitfire Audio Labs. This is a free plugin. I mention it in all my videos because I just love how good it is. could say that there is too much reverb and that those bell sounds are almost too loud. The purpose of making it like that is so that the sidechain that I have with the kick and the snare is even more emphasized. So let's get into the drums now. I start off with a heavy kick, very basic pattern, and then just some clicks. I then quickly transfer into using the heavy snare. The snare is layered between that sound, which is dry, short, sharp, and snappy, and then another one, which has more spaciousness to it. Then used a snare roll here, and then just took that main kick and reversed it into the other one. And I love how much that emphasizes the heaviness of the kick. Then of course, just sidechained the kick to everything. <laughs> then just set up individual sidechains for each of them. And the sidechain that I have on this particular one is huge. The threshold is right the way down at the bottom and the knee and ratio are pushed relatively high. Let me play the instruments and just turn the drum sound off, but so that the sidechain is still happening. <laughs> just ducking it massively. That's what gives it that heavy head bob feeling. So if I then play that with the drums back on, one of the other favorite things that I love in this type of drum production is just doing a heavy kick roll like this. And all you do is just layer up more kicks much faster and then make them quieter and make the volume increase into the other kick. So you can either reverse the kick into the next kick like that, or you can go, it's a slightly different effect each time, but they are both delicious. <laughs> Then some of my favorite drum sounds, which I have been looking for for a long time. It's an axial drum played usually with the pipe band, but you hear it in marching bands across in America. And it's some of my favorite producers use this type of snare. So I just found a sample that had this loop going, but the loop was very full on and I didn't want it to be on all the time because it would just take over. So I just cut it up into the sections based around the rest of the instruments. To gel it together a little bit, I just sent it across here and just put a tiny little bit of reverb on it. And it's not that obvious, but it just makes it a little less juttery when one sample stops and the next one starts. <laughs> That's so cool. It's so much fun producing with those types of drums. Then some other creativity that I got into, I was actually just recording some vocal ideas. I've got this new keyboard, uh, which has been ace to work with, and I was just recording a vocal idea with it. And uh, I just like scratched my fingers along it. I'm not really sure why. I think it's just cause it's got like really clicky clacky keys and they sound great. And so going like that sounds really cool. I kind of used it as almost like a reverse snare. And then I also used the space bar and just added that as a folly sound so that it would just give a little bit more character to the drums. And then this one here as a nice transition sound is actually just me dropping my computer mouse. Okay, I'm uh, <laughs> breaking everything. Yeah, I just think it's great trying to use some of the stuff around you because it's just not gonna sound like anybody else's drums. The next thing I added in was some guitar plucks. So I actually went back to the last song that I've been working on, Blue Moon. We set sail with a course to the west. I just recorded out one shots from the guitar that I used then because I liked the tone that I had and I thought, okay, well, I'll just keep using the same tone with the same little bit of distortion on it. And that's something I'd recommend whenever you're working on other projects is just to go back and 
print out little one shots and stems from your other projects so you can access them straight away. And that's not doing anything massively special, it's just adding a little bit more rhythm and texture behind everything, especially in the choruses. Then the last element, just to gel everything together, is just a massive heavy 808. And this again was from the Sicky Beats Pandora pack and I don't really ever need to do much to those samples because they already sound really rich. But I just side chain the kick to them but it's relatively gentle because I don't want to duck that quite as much as I'm ducking the instruments. And I just add it in and take it away wherever it feels necessary. Then just some little reverse sounds just to draw even more energy up at the end of each phrase. and I just have them placed tastefully all over the place. And then right at the very end. Some strings just to make it extra dramatic. So that was that. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'm excited to show you in more depth the arrangement and then also adding the vocals. You know what to do if you want to see that video when it comes out. It's great to have you here on the channel. I really look forward to sharing the next video with you. And until then, believe in yourself and you will be unstoppable. Show me